Well, Father's Day is a celebration of love, gratitude and admiration for the men who have played a vital role in our lives. Let's reflect on this day now with Patrick Mabileto, who is an author, uh, and a motivational speaker, as well as a life coach. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrick, in our studios. You have, of course, written this book, uh, Chronicles of a Fatherless Son, as we attempt to have a conversation around what it's like to be someone in South Africa growing up without a father. And, and it could be for a number of reasons. Maybe he's passed on and he's no longer here. But I think for our context and our conversation, for a lot of them, it is because of absent fathers. Mm. And I think a couple of years ago, Stasi Say released this horrific uh, you know, st stat that said roughly about 70% of black children grew up in households with absent fathers. Mm. How does someone in that kind of an environment <clears throat> deal with a day like this, where there's so much love and celebration given to fathers? First of all, thank you so much, Dougaza, for having me. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's an important day as well mm. when you're talking about fathers and you, you ask a question, what does this day feel like mm. for a child who doesn't have a father? I, I suppose as you grow, then you realize that it loses that importance as a boy child. But in the beginning, when you grow up and you're young and you see other children celebrating with their fathers mm. or walking to the malls or their mothers taking you know, their fathers for Father's Day, lunch or... Yeah, dinner or whatever, and, and you start to feel, man, what is wrong with me? You start to ask yourself a lot of questions about mm -hmm. who you are and why are you different? And, and that, those are the questions I asked myself. And I, I think I was, when I was turning seven, when I was going to school, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of kids going with their both parents. And for me, it was just uh, one parent. And it was a little bit you know, sad for me to say, you know what, why am I different? And I started asking questions about my father, and I realized that um, on this day, because we watched a lot of TV at that time, and you see uh, fathers are being celebrated, and on that day, you feel like people are insensitive. Mm. They are not. They are celebrating their fathers, but you feel like, ah, man, you know, I'm not celebrating anybody. I don't have anybody in, your li in my life, and, mm. and you start to feel... I don't know, neglected, mm. you start to feel all sorts of emotions. Less than, different, yeah. there's mm. a void. I mean, the words that you used to describe it make complete sense. What's curious for me is the fact that it's such a phenomenon, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, that figure, 70% of black children growing up in households with absent fathers. Mm. Why aren't we having more conversations around what are the sources? What are the problems? Mm. Where are the fathers? Why are they absent? Like, what are the causes? What are some of the kind of maybe anecdotal tales or stories that you've come across in your line of work of people who have struggled with fatherhood mm. and have opted to be absent as opposed to being present fathers. Because it's not just about being physically present in the house. Mm. But the child actually feeling the presence of a father yeah. um, around them in their, in their, in their everyday life. Yeah. I think most, lately, most people are having the conversations. Mm. You know, um, there are a lot of co um, organizations that are dealing with fatherless children and, and most of the things that arise you find. So that when I was writing a book, I was referring to you know, people who are fatherless due to death, mm. who are fatherless due to sometimes the father doesn't know the mother was pregnant because you know, the mother decided this guy is a bad guy, he cannot be the father. Or sometimes the father just walking out mm. right, and divorces mm. also. But one thing that people don't realize is that in that percentage, 70%, there's also another 10% of fathers that are in their house mm. but are not really present. Mm. They never talk to the kids. They never play with the kids. When they, they don't even know what grade their children are in. And that's how difficult it has gotten. I was on radio the, uh, the other day and a 45-year-old phoned and said, you know, I, uh, when I grew up, I used to see my father raising other children out there mm. you know they move out of their home they go move in with another lady who has children they raise those children and they don't raise them and i think the most dangerous thing that men don't realize is that the connection that you build and that you have with your children mm. from the beginning that's what's going to impact their lives mm. but if you're not there anything can happen to that boy child that you left even a girl child 
Mm. That later. Indeed. I mean, just in terms of data, children who grow up without their fathers grow into adults who are inclined to having mental health disorders, exactly. anxiety, yeah. depressive disorders, outbursts of anger, and this applies to both men and women. Mm. You know, it's children in general growing up without their fathers. Um, you tell your own story. How did you? work through that? How did you get over the hurdle of accepting that, okay, there is this void mm. in my life. As a child, I'm powerless to do anything about it. As an adult, there are things, there are tools that I can start putting in place in my life mm. to make it more meaningful and most importantly, so as to not repeat the cycle, to let it end with me, the experience of being mm. raised without a father. I think, I think one of when you say getting over it, I don't know if, if, if anyone ever does. Right. There's always that hole that says, Ish, I wish he was here. Mm. You know, there's always that thing to say, when you're struggling with your own kids, to say, oh, if my dad was here, he was, he was going to help. But then most guys that grow up without their fathers, they, they become great fathers. But the only problem is you can't be something that you were not taught. Right. What are you using to reference? Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and in the beginning it becomes so difficult and you're trying your best and you know, there's conflict there, you don't know how to resolve it and, and, and a lot of things happen, mm. right? And you you're trying to teach your children the experience that you never had. You're starting over. But if you don't give up, then you end up getting it right. Mm. Because if you realize one thing, one thing that I realized about my kids is they teach me how to be a father. They treat, teach me how to treat them, you know. Mm. And you spoke about anger issues that most boys will have. They, they get into drugs. And I remember some guy he got into drugs. He was in prison. And they asked him a question. You had a, a father in your life. What happened? And he said, no. My father didn't give me the attention. The only time he gave me attention was when I did something naughty. So I did naughty things. And then he noticed me, mm. and then they kept it kept going and going. And then when your parent looks at dad, they say to you, "Oh, you're a naughty child," but they don't understand that if they don't give you attention, you're going to find it. And that's how gangs and you know naughty people get your son. Mm. They get him because they love him, they hug him, they tell him he's special. And then he falls for those So he gets the acceptance in the completely wrong place. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I suppose just to close the, the, the conversation, you've, you've written a book about how you have managed to deal with your own trauma, mm -hmm. having grown up without a father. You've talked about how there are organizations that are trying to raise awareness around the social crisis yes. and get men to talk about what needs to be done. Are you feeling hopeful? about the work that's being done to try and address this problem? Or do you feel as though as South Africans we're sort of just turning a blind eye and accepting that this is a reality, that mm. our men do not stay and raise their children? I think the most men that I've encountered um, are showing hope. But you know, you can't change uh, something that has been happening for 100 years. You can't change it in 5 years or 10 years. It, it takes time. But the new generation that I've experience they love their kids they are there for their kids they're no longer sending their kids from Jobek to Emakaya to to um, to be looked after by grandparents mm. they look after them it's a struggle in Jobek with everything you know? right but they are there for them they take care of them and and, and I think it is changing a little bit um, but we give it time right. and we keep working at it well Patrick thank you so much for coming on to our program it. and sharing your insights with us